our next step with SPSS is, is to run our first test. So we're going to do a simple t-test. So in the last video, I showed you how to take your Excel file. And we said we might have something that's formatted to be um, human uh, readable friendly. And that for SPSS, we need to reorganize our data in a different way. So I had two classes. In this case, I'm uh, testing the difference between a, I've given, imagine I have two classes that are taking a midterm. And one of them I've given a guide, uh, it was nice to them, a uh, study guide. And the other class, I didn't give a study guide. And now I notice that there's a difference in the grades. It looks like the ones with the guide uh, got slightly better. And so I want to uh, use this as a sample um, to see if providing study guides to um, students makes them do better or on tests. So I'm going to, uh, first of all, I reformatted that. I have now have three columns. I've got a group variable, which is my class A and class B, uh, all the student numbers, um, so the unique samples in that, and the grade that each student received on the test. And so variables across the top, and each case, each sample unit down the side. Um, with a group variable. So click Save on that to make sure it's saved. And remember that I'm going to be opening that SPSS um, workbook in um, SPSS. So I'll close that and then I've opened SPSS and I'm going to tell it that I want to open an existing data source here. And then dive into my crazy hard drive look for that folder and again I know it's here um, but it's not showing up because I need to switch to an Excel file open my example t-test and then again read variable variable names from the first row of data yep my worksheet here's where I want to switch and make sure I use that SPSS worksheet it'll automatically choose the range here so I can leave the rest of this um, as default values all right, so now it's grabbed those uh, variable names in, my groups A and B, my student numbers, and my grades, formatted in the way that SPSS likes it. Now, another thing we want to check is a variable view here. This tells me how it's interpreted those variables. I can see that I've got a uh, group it sees as a string, a student is numeric, and grade is numeric. Um, and the key here is that I want to make sure that my variable um, for grades is a scale variable. So that's like a ratio. We talked about data types. Um, and the other one we're looking at is group. It's nominal um, and that's fine in this case. So let's go back to our data view and to actually run the t-test and most tests are under uh, analyze. So here I'm going to look at compare means um, and I see I've got an independent and paired sample t-test. And since these are two separate independent samples um, and not the same students taking the same test again. I want an independent sample t-test. Now here it's telling me the variables that I can use for this test and where I need to place them for it to run its, its um, run this test. In this case I've got a grouping variable and that's my groups A and B and the test variable is the grade that they received. So that's what I want to include. Now notice here it's got question marks for group, so I need to define groups. I can't quite see that A and B. So I'm going to tell it I've got group 1 is A and group 2 is B. Say continue. Now for most tests you may want to look at the other options to see what can be run. Uh, in this case we're going to leave the options to the defaults and say OK. And here we get the output viewer for SPSS and this is, gives us the results of the test um, which we can see here at the bottom. It produces some general descriptive statistics for these values, and then we get the results of the, the t-test. In the next video, I'll describe exactly what these mean, but what we're looking at is the p-values, which is right here in the significance level. And so that's what we will use to interpret whether or not there's been a significant difference or not. So hang out, and we'll check that out in the next video.